been told is that there's something broken here in Parliament Square and I've got to mend it. But first of all, I've got to find it. I think I should ask someone. Amber 125 from Amber Fault Control. Amber 125, go ahead. Green out at Parliament Square Junction with St Margaret Street. Michaela Strachan also on site. Yeah, would you that received? Hello. Hello. You don't happen to know if there's anything in there that's broken and needs mending, do you? I don't, but this might help you. Oh, thank you. Maybe it's a map or something. And what Michaela doesn't know is that it's a traffic light that's broken and she's about to mend it. Well, it's not a map. Uh, it looks like a wiring diagram. Wiring? What does that mean? Hello, Michaela. I'm Hello. Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. Hello. You've been given a circuit of the traffic lights here in Parliament Square. Right. They're broken. And yes. Guess who's going to repair them? Uh, me? Yep. Come on, let's go. I think my challenge has just begun. <laughs> the path along which electricity flows is called a circuit. A simple circuit can be made using a battery, lengths of wire and a bulb. Once the circuit is complete, electricity can flow. If the circuit is broken at any point, the electricity stops flowing. A switch is something that will break or make a circuit. A circuit can break in other ways. Inside a bulb is a very thin wire known as the filament. This wire is part of the circuit and through use, the filament of a bulb eventually breaks. The circuit's now broken, and so the electricity can't flow. The only way to complete the circuit again is to replace the bulb. Right, Michaela. Right. Now we've worn the traffic, let's go and test the circuits and find this problem, shall we? OK. This is the control box. Let's get right. it open. Wow. So the first thing we've got to do is switch it off. Right, OK, Michaela, now we switch the power off, I want you to test the circuits. Oh, OK. Around the other side here. Did you see that pile-up you just caused? No, <laughs> never. Wow. Okay. This looks really complicated. Yes, well, we've got to find the circuit that we want to test. Yeah. So have you got that circuit diagram that you've uh -huh. got yeah. given? Which one, that one? Yep, OK, we'll one? have a look at this one first. OK, here we are at the controller. Yeah. And we're interested in this post here. Right, that's the uh, one that's not working. That's right, number five. OK, so if we now get the other diagram out. Which is that one? That's right. OK. OK. OK, right, these are the red, amber, greens. And here is where we'll be testing for continuity. So how do you know which one is that like? Well, we have to look at the letters and numbers down here. Oh, I see. OK, so we're looking for the green on this page. So that's page. G. So R-A-G, that's red, amber, green, is that's it, right, all the yeah. way down? That's right, G is the pose we're looking for. Okay. OK, so if you want to put the probe well, there, and we'll test that. That's the red. Is it working? That's the amber. And that's the green. The buzz green. obviously means it's, it's yeah, a complete right. circuit, does it? The buzz means it's complete, yeah. So they're all complete? Yeah, OK, so all the circuits are all right from here. So the next thing we've got to look at is the post. So it's this bit, isn't it? Yeah, if you take the cap off there. OK. Test it as you did in the control box. Actually, it looks pretty similar to the control box, doesn't That's it? That's right, yes. Put it in the red. Red's buzzing. Amber, that's buzzing. Green. Well, the green's not doing anything, so what does that mean? Well, that means that the green bulb is faulty. Oh, OK. More than one bulb can be connected into a circuit, like this. The bulbs are said to be connected in series. When the switch breaks the circuit, all the bulbs go off. This is true wherever the switch is positioned in the circuit.
This isn't the only way to connect the bulbs. The bulbs are now connected in parallel. If they were connected this way with the switch positioned here or here, they still all go off. But if the switch is put in here, then only one goes off. And the same here and here. With three switches in place and the bulbs covered with coloured filters, we have a basic traffic light. To operate a traffic light like this, you'd need to stand by the roadside all day. In the 1920s, the police had to do just that. By turning the handle, the knobs on the spindle inside the controller operated the switches. As the discs move, the circuits are connected in the right order. Today, electronic microprocessors make the decisions automatically. They may look more complicated, but they're doing the same as the switches in our simple circuit. The controller is making and breaking circuits to turn the lights on and off. OK. Well, it looks pretty dead, I must say. OK. Here's the new one. Thank you. Right. There we go. I think we should turn them back on and get the traffic moving before we get some complaints, shouldn't we? Good idea. Well, I have to say, that seemed pretty easy. Can I go home now? No, not quite. Here oh. This is Jim Wallace, MP. Pleased Hello, you. Jim. Thanks very much for solving this light. You can get the traffic moving again around the Houses of Parliament. Now, I'm here to give you the next stage of your challenge. Yes, I thought that bit seemed a bit too easy. Oh, well, just you wait. There's a light in my constituency that needs some electrical work done in it. Now, uh -huh. here's the air ticket. Thank you. My constituency includes the Shetland Islands. When you get there, first make your way to a place called Mavis Grind. Mavis Grind. Mavis Grind. And from there, well, I suggest you first get a taxi and head off to where the light is. It's a place called Muckle Flugger. OK, well, uh, what time's the flight? Soon. Oh, golly, it is, isn't it? Listen, I'd better go. Thanks very much, you two. Bye. Bye. All the best. Taxi! From London, Michaela will fly north to the Shetland Isles. In one place on the island, the Atlantic Ocean is separated from the North Sea by little more than a road. So, this is Mavis Grind, where the North Sea meets the Atlantic. Now, which way round are we? Uh, right. That must be the North Sea. And that must be the Atlantic. And this is where I'm supposed to hail a taxi. But there's absolutely nothing here. I can't imagine where I'm going to get a taxi from. Well, I'll give it a go. Taxi! taxi! There's absolutely nothing here. Well, this really is some sort of taxi ride. It's absolutely fantastic. And apparently, Chris here is flying me to the most northern part of the Shetland Isles, which is also the most northern part of the British Isles. Brilliant view. That's Muckle Flugger. That's Muckle Flugger. Chris, that's a lighthouse. I suppose my challenge is on the lighthouse. I can't believe it. How are we going to land there? How are we going to land there, actually? <laughs> oh, dear. Well done. <laughs> Hi, Michaela. Welcome to Muckle Flood. Hi. I'm Steve Daly. Hi, Steve. Uh, I'm an engineer on the Northern Lighthouses. And this lighthouse here is manned at present. There are lighthouse keepers and they turn the light on and off. Now what we're doing all over Scotland is making these lighthouses automatic. And we want you to help us do that. So if you come with me to the control room, I'll show you what it's all about. Oh, it sounds interesting. <laughs> How does Muckle Flugger work? 
We can think of it rather like a large torch. They both have batteries, wires and a bulb. The lighthouse runs off batteries, since no mains electricity cable has ever been laid from the mainland. The batteries needed are equivalent to 100,000 torch batteries. These batteries are recharged by electricity produced by diesel generators. Wiring runs to the lamp at the top of the tower and back to complete the circuit. This is the automatic lighthouse keeper. All this... These automatic switches will replace the men who've switched the light on and off over the years. Michaela's challenge will be to help Steve and his team finish the wiring. There are several jobs to do, and the first is to connect the main lamp to the new control system. The cables travel round here. So we're following the black one. What's the blue one? The blue ones are the control cables to make the station automatic. OK, where now? We go up. These are the three switches which you have to put off to make sure everything's safe. One, two, three. And now where? Ah, up again. So this is the top of the lighthouse. This is incredible, Steve. Look at it. This is the lens. Wow. The bulbs are inside the lens. That is not what I imagined at all. I literally thought it would be like a great big light that flashes on and off. When the bulb comes on, it stays on. It doesn't flash. It just stays on. And the lens rotates. And through all these lenses, the beam goes out over the sea. And that's what makes it look like it's flashing. But it's not really the bulb that's flashing. It's the turning lens that causes the apparent flash. Gosh, that's amazing. I never knew that. And are both those lights on? Just one's on at a time. There's the main lamp when the other ones are reserved in case the first one fails. Michaela's job is to wire the bulbs into the automatic system. This is the control cubicle. Mm -hmm. What you have to do, Michaela, is put these wires into those terminal blocks. Right. And we find out where they go from the circuit diagram. So this and is just like doing a plug, really, isn't it's it? It's just the same as a plug, except that the wires are numbered. Got very that. importantly, the earth wire. It's always green and yellow for earths. OK, that's that done. That's it. Well, Steve, I think it's getting dark, so we should switch it on and get the light going. I think we should. So it's these back on then, isn't it? These switches are to go back on, but normally what happens is that a lighthouse keeper does this. And this is the last night the lighthouse keepers are going to be switching these on. And I'd like you to meet John. Hi, one John. Of the lighthouse keepers. Usually his job to switch these on each night when it gets dark. OK. Well, Michaela, since you've travelled all the way from London just to come up and see us, and Perhaps you could do the honour and switch on the lights for the last time for us. You just turn them all three upwards. One, two, and three. Well, that's the light all switched on manually for the very last time. And now, for the very first time, I'm going to spend a windy night in an old lighthouse. When the lighthouse keepers have left, there'll be no eyes to see when it's getting dark. The automatic system's eyes are light sensors, which will tell it when to switch the light on. OK, Michaela, this is the light sensor I was telling you about. So this is the automatic eye for when people aren't manning the lighthouse? That's exactly what it is. It's just a switch operated by light. Now, I'll draw the symbol for it. Right. And it's somewhere in this drawing. You have to find it and connect it up. I've got other things to do. I'll see you later. OK, see you later. Hmm. There are rather a lot of symbols here telling me where to connect what. So, um, I think this may take me some time. When you first see a circuit diagram, it looks rather like a map with lines and symbols. All these boxes, circles and squiggles each represent a different electrical device. 
The lines represent the wires that connect them. In the 19th century, when scientists were first learning about electricity, they wanted others to know about their work, and the easiest way to describe what they were doing was to draw it. This is one of the first modern circuit diagrams, drawn in 1878 by Thomas Edison. It's of his latest invention, the incandescent light bulb. By now, scientists were using symbols for the electrical equipment involved. His drawings were logical. The circuit consisted of two wires from a battery that connected to a bulb, and it could be closed or turned on by a switch. When he came to draw this, his symbols looked much like the real thing, so we have a symbol for a light bulb and a switch. But there was a problem. Not everybody used the same symbols in their circuit diagrams. So to avoid confusion, everybody had to agree what the symbols were. Now builders, engineers, and not just electricians can understand circuit diagrams. For instance, when they see this symbol, they know it represents a light sensor. Right, well, that's that done. Now to see if it works. Now if I put my hand over the light sensor, it'll think it's dark, and hopefully that will switch the light on. But apparently it's got a 30 second delay, and that's in case a seagull or some other bird lands on the ledge there, spreads its wings out, and blocks all the light. So obviously this will think that it's dark. Is it coming on? Brilliant. What a clever switch. Well, I think we've finished up here. What we have to do now is turn it over to the automatic system. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for inviting me here to Muckle Flugger and challenging me with the final part of the automation of the lighthouse. This ends an era of 130 years of manned lighthouses, and obviously we're making them computerised now. So, John, as the lighthouse keeper, will you help me do this? Very good. Have yes. you got anything to say? Well, yes, it is uh, a sad occasion to take you up on at this time, because if it's after 130 years we've been... Well, light keepers have been going up and down the tower, making sure the light's in, making sure it's out, and also watching the coastline shipping, especially in bad weather. And now it's all going to be left for this wee box in the corner. This is a sad time, isn't it? That's well, should right. we count down? Three, two, two one. Yeah, there we go! go. <laughs> Hooray!